Blake Crosby, National Supervisor of Scouting for the Toronto Blue Jays, joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Blake, nice to have you on the show. Thanks for having me on, guys. How are you doing? Great. Hey, from one BYU guy to another, uh, thanks for allowing my Baltimore Orioles to score all of three runs <laughs> against your Toronto Blue Jays over the weekend. That was really nice of you. Yeah, no, you know what? We uh, got on track there this past weekend, so it was good. It's good to see the guys go out and, and have a good couple of days, and hopefully we can kind of keep that rolling now uh, throughout the season. Blake, you played at BYU, and here you find yourself as uh, the national supervisor of scouting for the Blue Jays. Walk us briefly through the path from playing at BYU to how you got where you are today. Yeah, so I uh, yeah, so played at BYU in, in 06, and then actually at the time, um, that was when my older brother Bobby was playing for the Oakland A's. And I knew that I always wanted to work in baseball, um, you know, and kind of going through college and those kind of things. Um, I decided that, you know, I'd have a lot more opportunities, you know, kind of out West being closer to my brother, um, learning from, you know, guys like Billy Bean and David Force and, you know, Farhan Zaidi. And so that's why I actually ended up transferring um, over to Sacramento State. And so I played there for, for three years, um, you know, got drafted, you know, my after my senior year, I was, you know, I was an older senior. I was 24 years old at the time, um, you know, but I really feel like in that, those three years, I mean, I got to spend a lot of times with a lot of quality baseball people. And it was one of those things where, you know, look, you, you kind of had to take a look at the future and say, you know, where, where it's going to be best for my opportunity and my career going forward. Um, with that being said, I, I loved my time at BYU. I loved the, the people I knew there. Um, still have a passion for the school. And, and actually, if you're asking me, you, you know, you guys are talking about your question of the day. You know, when BYU Sports Nation, that's that's my biggest highlight when that started in 2013. So that's my biggest highlight for BYU Sports. Nice. Blake, you can join us anytime you want, like any day. I don't want to I don't want to talk about the Orioles. I want to talk about my Mariners more. But that is yeah, that is you still can't believe it. That's yeah. That's great stuff. Fantastic. Uh you brought up Billy Bean and one of yeah. our favorite movies, Moneyball. It's a classic. Yeah. Are you more Brad Pitt or like the other scouts in that movie? <laughs> uh, I, I, I can promise you, I can tell you what my wife hopes I was, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but no, you know what? I mean, I guess in that actual film, I'd be, you know, one of the scouts in the room. Um, you know, that's kind of what I'm doing now. I, I would say, you know, from the time that that movie was made to, to now that, you know, there's been a lot more that's come into play with, you know, the analytics and, you know, track man, it's different things that we're doing, you know, to evaluate talent. Um, you know, with that being said, it's always interesting for me to watch Moneyball just because I, I mean, I know Billy personally and, you know, it's, it's, it's always just interesting to see him portrayed. I mean, um, knowing Billy and the career that he's, the, the career that he's had, um, and the person he is, I mean, I, I can't look up to him and say enough about him. Um, so it's, it's always interesting for me to, to watch that and hear people's perception of him. How much do advanced metrics play into what you do now? Because it was like this whole thing with like war and whatnot. Obviously, people are familiar with on-base percentage from Moneyball. It's way more than that. But now you have exit velocity and spin rate for pitchers and whatnot. So not all high schools and colleges have these metrics per se, the stat right. cast and whatnot. So how do you reconcile what you see with your eye versus what you see on paper? Well, I mean, look, I can only speak for, you know, our organization, and I think – you know, working under, you know, our scouting director, Steve Sanders, I mean, he does as good a job as anybody in the business of doing it. I mean, he takes in all the information that we have, you know, from an analytic standpoint, from a scouting standpoint, um, from a makeup and character standpoint. Um, and we kind of blend all those things together. And, you know what, and then we'll line up a board and we'll talk about these players and we'll analyze them. And, and so, so there's just a lot of things that go into the evaluation. Um, like you were saying, I mean, it is tough on the amateur level because, you know, you go scout a, a high school kid in, you know, Arkansas, and they may not have, you know, track man or any, or any of those things. So a lot of a lot of on the amateur side is going to come back to, you know, the scout, the pure scouting evaluation. But I think on the college side, um, there's been, really been some good advances in, as far as the track man and the data that we pitch data that we can use. Um, so it's really kind of blending all of the information. And then at the end of the day, um, you know, trusting the process that you've gone through and, and make the best selection. Blake Crosby, National Supervisor of Amateur Scouting for the Toronto Blue Jays with us on BYU Sports Nation. What is your typical day like as a National Supervisor of Amateur Scouting? Well, you know, I mean, 
I travel a lot, so I, I can't tell you where I'm waking up every day. <laughs> you know, so you know, I'm in a different state or different city each and every day. Um, especially, you know, the crazy time is you know January to June um, as we're getting prepped for the draft. Um, you know, but throughout the morning, you know, I'm usually writing reports or watching video or you know reading notes that some of our other scouts have put into our computer system. Um, just collecting as much information as I can. Obviously, you know, you're going to the games and you're scouting and you're evaluating, um, you know, and then honestly, besides that, I mean, there, there's a lot of free time too. I mean, you, you have a lot of time to, you know, sometimes explore the cities that you're in. Um, you know, for myself, I'm, I'm kind of a movie buff. So I like to watch movies and, and hang out because so, you got to have, you got to have a little fun too. Um, but as far as, you know, the scouting life, I mean, it's, it, it's fun. It's, it's rewarding. And, um, you just, you wake up every day, not really knowing where you're going to be and who, you know, what player you're going to see. And it just it gives you a passion to work every day. What are some of the best, uh, stadium foods you've encountered? And I'm hoping you say <laughs> the, uh, grasshoppers in Safeco field. <laughs> you know what? I actually, I haven't had the grasshoppers at Safeco, you know? And so it, I, actually in my job, I mean, I'm, I'm doing a lot more of the high school and college. So I, I guess that's kind of where my, my mind tends to go. I mean, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of, you know, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, they have those tricep sandwiches um, that I like to like to crush on occasion. Um, you know, but besides that, I mean, as far as stadium foods, um, you know what, Petco Park down in San Diego is really good. They have really good foods. I mean, you got a lot of good uh, Mexican eats down there. So um, I think just about every stadium now in Major League Baseball has good food. But I guess now i got to try the grasshoppers up at Safeco. <laughs> or don't. You know, it'll be all right. Challenge yeah. <laughs> issued, Blake. <laughs> I mean, I, I go to the Northwest a lot. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm usually looking for fish and clam chowder up there. I'm not usually looking for grasshoppers, but, you know, I guess I'll, I'll do that next time. BYU baseball encounters some interesting uh, obstacles, if you will, when it comes to landing post-mission guys, older guys in the major leagues yeah. because you're looking at such young players to grow and develop within minor league systems. What's the biggest hurdle that a BYU baseball player, especially those that went on a mission, uh, have to overcome to get their shot in the big leagues? Well, I mean, look, and I, and I speak from, you know, experience from it. I, it it's tough, you know, and, and especially for, you know, a position player, you know, you're taking two years off, you know, so that's two years away from, you know, at bats, it's two years away from ground balls. And so really your the, the biggest challenge is your development clock is, you know, the fact that, you know, these kids that are, you know, going right into college and they're playing when they're 19, 20 years old, you know, you know, you're out on your mission and, and really not playing at all or doing any type of physical activity. So really that's the tough part. And then from a, you know, a player development standpoint, you know, I mean, you look at the majority of major league players, I mean, their prime years are going to be, you know, somewhere in their late twenties to early thirties. And, you know, for some of the kids that do go on missions, um, you know, they come back and by the time they're drafted, usually it's, you know, it's 23, 24 and, you know, and they still got to go through, you know, the minor league process, a single A, double A, triple A, you know, so is there times where it can be, be sped up because, you know, Hey, a guy goes into minor league ball and he, he goes off and he's, you know, doing everything that he needs to do to advance. Yeah, sure. That happens. I mean, we've seen it, you know, just recently with, you know, guys like, you know, Jacob Hanneman and, um, but at the same time, you know, this is where it kind of gets into that area of like, look, baseball is one thing and life's another. And, you know, I, I look back on my time, you know, being on a mission and I wouldn't trade it for anything that I did in the world, you know? And so, so yeah, would it have been nice to have those two years of baseball? Sure. But I look at my mission and said, you know what, that's, that's the best thing I've ever done in my life. So that's a mission. How about marriage? Can that be a pro or a con to a scout if a player's married? You, you know what? I, 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 I hate speaking for everybody because, you know, um, I, I don't know what everyone's take is on that. Um, but for me personally, it, it really depends on, it really depends on the spouse, you know, because look, uh, you know, I had a great experience with a kid named Taylor Cole at BYU. Um, you know, and when he was pitching at BYU, I got to know him and his wife, Madeline. And, you know, in getting to know those two and getting to see how they work together and how they operate and the fact that Madeline was fully supporting Taylor behind his goals, no matter where he was in the minor leagues. And that was just a couple that frankly, I, I just couldn't bet against, um, you know, now there's been times where, you know, you've met couples and you're like, man, I, 
I really think that this they might struggle a little bit because maybe she wants to to go on and do a different part of life, or maybe he wants, you know, something in life that probably is not going to jive with, you know, with baseball. Um, but again, for a guy like you know Taylor and his wife Madeline, I mean, for me, they were the ideal married couple, and I, I just I wouldn't bet against them. Blake, let's finish with this. What's the perception of the BYU baseball program right now in the major leagues? You know what? It's it's strong. Um, I I can't say enough good things about what Mike Littlewood has done coming over to BYU. Um, You know, I remember the time when, uh, you know, when, when Vance Law was, was out as the coach and, and they were looking for candidates. And I, in my mind, you know, having scouted the area, I, and to myself, I said, you know, look, there wouldn't be anybody better for this job than Mike Littlewood for what he was doing down at Dixie. um, You know, he's a BYU alum. You know, his demeanor, the way that he, he coaches, the way that he handles players, the way that he prepares them for professional baseball. I, I mean, I could go on and on about the quality attributes of, of Mike Littlewood. So, and I think that, that that view is shared by just about everybody in Major League Baseball. Blake, it's been great to have you on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, we'll do it again. Your compliment earned you at least one more trip to the show. <laughs> All right, guys, anytime. You let me know. You got it. Blake Crosby on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future.